Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. I am the king of armor destruction and my name is Matt. We've got a body armor test today, one of those things that I love doing on the channel, probably what I'm known for best besides my ammo and 5.7 tests. I have some body armor from Shot Stop today. Skip sent me over a pair of their HS, I do believe this is their original level four offering, to test with no strings attached. Our HS RF3 level four plate weighs right around five pounds, six ounces per my note on here. Depending on where I measured, it was anywhere from 890 to 910 thousandths thick. So a pretty thin level four plate. Typically, most of our other level four plates are at least an inch and upwards to 1.15 inches thick. If you peruse my channel for a little bit, you'll see I am very data driven. So when it comes to body armor, I try to stick to as many constants as possible so that we can take this data from this test and use it to compare to another body armor in a different test or some of the NIJ lab reports. So I shoot at 45 feet. That is the official NIJ testing distance for rifle armor. I shoot at zero degrees. That is worst case for the armor. I use this giant clay briefcase right here filled with Roma plastilina non-hardening clay donated by Chavant. There's about 90 pounds of it there. It provides a compressible media for the body armor to give us a representation of what back face or the amount of, you know, compression that it's going to put in someone's chest if it stops that round. Now, it's not calibrated be now it's not calibrated because you need to be about 90 degrees internal temperature. So my back face is more of a representation and I like to use it so I can just have a solid mounting place to put our body armor so we're not throwing it on the ground or strapping it up against a steel target or doing something very obscure with it. Since this does employ a ceramic strike face, again, per the NIJ standard, I have a drop test rig and I drop both plates that you see here on their face two times as a preconditioning test. I do not detect any foam strike face protectant on these plates. And as you can see on the plate on the left, it does employ a reduced strike face. We've seen this before with a lot of our testing that the strike face of ceramic does not extend edge to edge. The NIJ shoots a minimum of two inches from the edge and sometimes upwards of three depending on the threat. So there's a little bit of a gray area there. So I try to mark that out when I can on plates. I also use a chronograph so we have that velocity data. It's about 80 to 90 degrees outside today. I also put a spreadsheet here at the beginning that kind of foreshadows all the different rounds that I'm gonna test at it. So you guys kind of know ahead of time what I'm gonna do. And at the end, I fill it all out and then I send you on your merry way. I'm very curious on how our level four plates can handle multiple strikes of the NIJ specified level four threat. So I think with this first plate, we're gonna take four shots of M2AP, then some 5.56 threats at this, and then switch to the second plate. So as I mentioned for NIJ level four, you have to only stop one round of M2 armor piercing going 28, 80 feet per second. You won't see that out of most surplus unless maybe going to a 26 inch or longer barrel. So I've loaded it into our 300 Winchad or 300 Winchester Magnum. We got a TC Compass 22 inch barrel with our JK Armament rifle kit on here. So we're gonna see that specified velocity or maybe just a touch more. This is a 165, 163 grain hardened steel core penetrator in here. Very cool that something from World War II is what the standard is. This first shot will be in the upper left of the plate where I place all those shots. way over spec that by about 30 feet per second. Good hit on the plate though. In specification that time, this one will be the lower left. In specification, I smoked one of my straps And then this guy, lower right, in specification. I went down and checked our plate to make sure we had enough of it left over for these shots, and we do. So now we've brought out Mr. Long and Strong. This is our 22 inch TC compass. We have a turbo 556 up front, so we're gonna see maximum velocity. I am working on getting a 24 inch barrel, which would be slightly overkill, but you know, hey, it's still within the realm of possibility. So I have three threats for our 5.56. I have M193, that is 
a 55 grain full metal jacket. It really excels at penetrating steel armor. I have M855, that is the Army's 62 grain ball round, has a conical steel tip in it. The entire core is not steel, just a tip, lead behind it. That excels at penetrating all a 100% pure polyethylene style plate. Then I have the Army's current issue ball round, M855A1, 62 grain enhanced performance round, much larger steel tip, harder as well, right around 60 on the C scale versus 49 to 50 C scale on the M855. And it has a, this one has a copper core. That one kind of also excels at polyethylene and sometimes depending on the hardness of steel can shine as well as against ceramic. So we'll take those two shots last. The middle two will be M855, and then our first two will be M193. I'm trying out this Norma Ruag M193 to see what kind of velocity that we get, because I'm running low on the Independence M193, which is my good velocity round. So this round will be the upper top of the plate. Ew, really low velocity. Then this one will be left, all the way to the left in the middle. This one will be right next to it. A lot of smoke down there. Now the M855A1. And where do I have a spot left on that plate? I'll place this above the last M855A1 shot. All right, let's go see what we did to that plate. All right, there's a lot of action going on this plate. I was able to mark them all out. M2AP shot number one, number two, number three, and number four. So that left our entire center. M193 shot was right here. I was a little low. I wanted to be up here a little more. That was shot number one. Shot number two, M855 right next to it. M855 shot number two. And then A1, number one and two. That one was not where I wanted it to be. So that one I would maybe not consider a fair hit. It's kind of close. But these other ones are more than two inches away from each other. I would consider those fair hits. Place those bets in the comments below. zoom out a little bit here so we can get the big picture that's what she said i will say that this plate is not super durable at least i mean i shot it more than what it's designed for but we get a lot of delamination and everything already oh no pass-throughs folks that i can detect we do a tear down here at the end to make sure that I don't lie to you all and find a hole in the back of here. But all of our shots are contained inside of this plate. Now that last M2 AP shot looks like it took a, quite a bit of a back face there. Like I said, our clay is cold, so it won't show us a true representation of back face. But let's check this bottom shot here. 57 millimeters. That's right on the edge of that plate. So it looks like it pushed it up and in. These other shots though, 27. 23 this one up here looks a little more 38 so in nij clay you could see quite a bit more but that's interesting that we're able to stop all of those rounds on that plate now like i said this one as far as durability wise over those multi hits seems to be on the lower end we've already separated this coating here but cool let's try some of those obscure threats time to bring out our 308 We've got a TC compass with a 22 inch barrel and our JK armament rifle kit. So maximum velocity here. I have one very common threat and then three essentially level four threats. I have P80 black tip, very close to M61, has a hardened steel core in it like M2 AP, but not the same design wise. We have M80A1, that is the army's current issue ball round. It's like the M855A1, has a copper core and a very large 
arrowhead steel exposed tip on it. The Rockwell hardness on that's like 49 to 52, not as hard as MA55A1. I have M14A1 that is armor piercing incendiary, originally loaded in 30 out 6. I don't have a 30 out 6, so I've loaded them in 308. And finally, M80 ball. That's just a standard 145 to 150 grain full metal jacket. Going around 2,800 feet per second if we're lucky. It is surplus. I'll take these shots on the outer side of the plate, and then if I have enough room, I have one more special threat that I think we'll throw at our shot stop level four plate. So this will be upper left first. Sticky brass. Then our M80A1. Good velocity off that guy. A little on the slow side. Normally we see about 3,000 with this. It is surplus. Then the API. This always makes a nice flash show. And sticky brass. Maybe. Gotta grab the hammer. Sorry about that. I use MKE brass and it doesn't like this chamber after being fired. So this is our M80 ball shot. The lower right. Make sure I'm lined up on the old chronograph here. It looks like I am, but maybe. All right, let's go see what we did. I have one more threat that we're gonna throw at this plate and then we're gonna go down and see what we did. Based on what I saw performance wise from the first plate is it looks like they're using pretty thick silicon carbide ceramic tiles, a tile array, not a solid strike base. So I'm gonna shoot a pretty advanced thread out of it, but we're gonna use the shorter 16 inch barrel here. This is a CZ 557 Urban Counter Sniper, Sniper JK Armament Rifle Kit on there, so we're quiet for the golfers over yonder. This is NAMO AP8, armor piercing number eight, or more commonly known as M993 armor piercing. This guy is 130 grains and employs a very sexy tungsten core. Pretty much most level four that I've shot this against has trouble stopping this out of the 16 inch. The 22 inch just sails right through it. I think the only round that I've tested so far that exceeds this thing's performance is that tungsten core eight millimeter Mauser that we shot. I'm gonna place this guy right dead center on the plate. Awesome. We've got fair hits on our plate right here. Here was our P80. Here was our M80A1. Here was our M14A1 API. I don't know if you guys can hear from the camera or not. I think I might have to roll B-roll audio because I lost the microphone. But I can hear the flash on these when it hits. And here was our ball. And then M993. Zoom out back to 1x here. Come over here. And we'll in a little bit. Place those bets in the comments below. Uh oh, Raggy. RM993. Still no joke. Plowed a hole straight through that guy. I would consider all these a fair hit. It stopped all of our other 30 cal threats. Back face. On that ball round there in the bottom though, that bottom corner. It's about, about 37 millimeters. Some of these other hits, 22, 12, 17. So whatever polyethylene shot stop is using is doing a pretty good job at controlling back face unless you get down here in the corner. But we're really close to that foam edge that they're using on this 
to make it a little lighter. Our M993 though, still continues to be a problem for most level four, even out of the 16 inch. Now for the tear down. This was not hard to do on these plates. If I could offer any constructive criticism, I always do when doing these tear downs, it would be to have a more robust encasement on these. Here is plate number one. Here's our polyethylene, pretty standard. I know ShotStop has a patented technology called Deridium. I'm not sure if that's a different type of polyethylene or possibly in the way that they layer them, but there were no pass-throughs at all on the back of our plate. Here's our cover. It's just kind of like a polyurethane, you know, Linux cover. And then we flip this over. It was not hard to separate the backer from the strike face. This white that you see here is our reduced strike face edge. I always will say in every single video, if we can decrease the amount of this and get more edge to edge coverage, I would pay a weight penalty for that. This guy measures 405 thousandths thick, pretty beefy silicon carbide from what I can tell. There is no drop face foam on here. Looks like they're using a good a bit of adhesive, at least here, but would like to see more so it was harder to get this apart. Here is plate number two with our 308 threats. There was the M993. Didn't detect any other pass-throughs on here, so I don't need to pull the cover off this HS1 plate. Again, here is the front of it. You can see pretty good there. There's no drop face. It looks like they are using some type of adhesive, but it just doesn't want to seem to stick very well to those tiles. Not sure if the tiles need to be roughed up a little bit or a different type of adhesive used. Here's some more of that foam. They're using a really high density foam on this guy. Normally, some plates I can squish this. This stuff I can't. Hmm, interesting. And as you can see, when you get into these rectangle tile array plates, there's still a good amount of plate left up here and in some other areas. So it can do a really good job at controlling crack propagation versus a monolithic strike face, but you gotta be careful not to decrease the size of those tiles too much depending on the threat that you're rating for. With all these body armor assessment demos, whatever you want to call them, that we've done out here at the range over the years, I am very curious about the Army's upcoming 6.8 millimeter load in terms of its performance against ceramic body armor. It seems even after this test, most of our 5.56 loads are becoming obsolete against ceramic armor. Our shot stop HS level four RF3 plate had no trouble shrugging off four rounds of M2 AP at and above the specified velocity in addition to 556 threats on that plate as well. As I mentioned in the teardown, I would like to see some improvements on some of these plates and this goes for everyone. Reduce the foam on the edge and give us more edge to edge strike face whenever possible. Add our drop face foam on there to help protect our strike face from falling apart and this allows you to bond more layers on top of this ceramic so that when it does take hits it can keep itself together longer although when you put it in a plate carrier the plate carrier itself is going to do a pretty good job of holding that plate in place and not allowing you know ceramics and things to shift when it gets shot but when you use these tile arrays if you do take a hit up here on this tile you've allowed free space to occur so if you're not using good adhesives to bond it all together that is a chance for a perforation to happen the sun is setting and that's my cue to get the heck out of here at the end of all my videos i take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible you guys only see the front end work the final published video of this there's a lot of work that goes into the back end of this you know video editing acquiring body armor and acquiring some of these special rounds so there's a lot of people that help make these possible Number one is my Patreon supporters. They help me buy straps and all those weird ammunitions. Number two is Skip over at Shot Stop, who provided those body armor panels for us to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.